Hi there beautiful people, it's your girl Toya C and I'd like to welcome you to my channel Do It In God where we aspire to live transparently, ultimately to glorify God. If this is your first time joining us, well, welcome just in time for the new year. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and of course do not forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I do drop a new video. So, 2021 is here. It is upon us and by God's grace, this year is going to be better than next year. At least that's what I am striving for. I don't know about you, but I would like to believe you're still optimistic, right? Right? Good. Okay, now that we've established that we are aiming to make this year a good year, it's also very important that we put the right things in order, right? We prioritize. And if you have been following me for a long time, you know that my number one priority is what? My faith. My faith walk. That is paramount to anything. That tops everything else. And so every year I always challenge myself to up the ante when it comes to how deep I go into the Word of God. And that is what has propelled me to record today's video. Some of you may find yourself in a place where you do want to engage God and you do want to seek into the Word, but for some reason you are struggling either with understanding the Word or maybe you've gathered some misconceptions that have discouraged you from studying the Word. Well, if you would like to successfully so the word of God in 2021, this video is for you. I encourage you to stay tuned. Okay, before I go any further into sharing the couple of tips that I've put together um, that I hope would help you guys successfully study the Bible this year, I want to first even emphasize on the importance as to why we need to study the Bible for ourselves. Um, now more than ever, it's very, very imperative. I think it's always been imperative, but now more than ever, it is so obvious that we need to engage God by reading his word. Um, God has called every single one of us to relationship with him. God has called every single one of us to engage him one-on-one -on -one individually. Yes, collective community fellowship is great, but that should not eliminate the need, the strong need for that intimate relationship with God right and a lot of us through the years will fall in prey to um other people's mis um, interpretations of what the word may be and dare i say even some misinterpretations and misrepresentations and so it's very essential that we go into the word for ourselves and really dig into what god is saying to us especially in this season and so with that said i'm going to be sharing with you guys a couple of tips that i've put together that helped me for one in my walk when i first began to get serious about studying the bible um and i'm hoping it will do the same for you my first tip is this you need to debunk the myth that you have to study the bible at a particular time or day hear me again you don't have to study the bible at 6 a.m in the morning to be considered a deep bible scholar you don't have to study the bible first thing in the morning to be considered to be a deep Bible scholar. Nowhere in the scripture does it talk about that. All we've been instructed to do is to study the word to show ourselves approved, as said in the scriptures, right? This is something that I struggled with in my early years of walking with the Lord, you know, was that I always beat myself up for not, um, you know, I guess waking up early to study the word. And just a side note, the issue for me wasn't even necessarily waking up early because I still wake up early now and I actually study the word in the morning time now. The issue for me was that I would literally find myself falling asleep. And I used to get so frustrated because I would come in there saying, God, please help me stay awake. God, keep me. I want to study the word. I want to eat your word. I want to engage you. And literally five, ten minutes tops into me studying the Bible, I will fall asleep, right? Until I got the understanding that God did not want me in, you know, studying the Bible to be a chore. God did not want me to make my one-on-one -on -one time with him, my devotional time with him, my time of just, you know, hearing his voice. He didn't want me to consider that to be a task that I had to check off my list for the year. He wanted it to be something that I did just naturally, something that came from me wanting to, you know, I guess, engage the lover of my soul. And the moment I gained that understanding, I promise you guys, it became easier. No longer did I struggle to stay awake because I was just so into what I was doing. I was so excited to open the Bible and just hear what God had for me for that day. Versus me just opening the Bible to say, you know what, I'm here to study. Oh Lord, speak to me. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we should not take the Bible seriously because it is the Word of God. It is our lifeline, so it should be treated as such. But what I'm saying to you is we cannot earn God's approval. So it's very, very important that we debunk the myth that it has to be a one way and a one time in a particular place 
to engage God or to seek out God through his word. The second tip that I'm going to recommend to you guys is this. Always do a brain dump before opening your Bible. Whoa, what is a brain dump, Toyo C? A brain dump is pretty much you taking everything that has got your mind busy and just dumping all those things out before opening the Bible to even begin to study the word. Um, you can do a brain dump several ways. You can sit down there for five minutes and just talk to God about whatever it is that is gonna be a distraction, right? Sometimes it might be something you've watched on TV that just keeps playing in your mind. The mind is so powerful, flashes and images, right? Just dump those things out. Sometimes it might be things that you're worried about, maybe some bills you have to pay, some assignments that are due, whatever it is, take a moment to just dump it out. You can write out on paper. For me, writing works for me, so I write things out, right? And in the middle of me writing those things that are just cluttering my mind out, I'm actually even engaging God in their process. And the ones that require for me to receive rebuke from heaven, I re receive it. The ones that require for me to receive rest, I receive it. And before I know it, I am ready to open the word of God and just eat and dine at his feet. So yes, that's the number two tip. Always do a brain dump before you open your Bible. Number three, get you a Bible journal. This one is a common thing that I know a lot of people have pretty much been subscribing to lately, especially now that we live in a world where there's so many versions of it, right? So there's no excuse. Get your Bible journal. Even if you don't want to get one of the um, expensive ones, just get your notebook. As long as you have something, some form of stationery that you can use to document um, what you are experiencing and receiving while studying your Bible, make sure you do so. You can even use your phone. Yep, you heard me. You can use your phone. Let me show you guys something real quick. I have a, an actual journal, but I also have notes in my Bible, okay, that I write out. And I just use the app, the Samsung Notes the app that came on my phone. Yes, I'm a Samsung baby. I don't do Apple. I'm, not, I'm Android all day, every day. Don't come for me. Please don't come for me. <laughs> no, but um, before I digress, what I'm pretty much saying is make sure you have something that you can use to document what you're receiving. Because the Word of God is so powerful that when you truly engage the Word of God the right way, you will get some revelations that can only be received in that moment in space, in time. Right? And if you do not take stock of it and you do not, you know, write it down or record it somewhere, you might just not remember. It has happened to me so many times and I had bit myself up because those were things that were literally priceless that I just lost. Gold, things that money cannot buy. So it's essential that you get you a Bible journal. Number four, learn to approach the Word of God as though you're approaching God Himself. Did you hear me? Learn to approach the Word of God as though you're approaching God Himself because the Word of God is His Word. Oftentimes, we approach the Bible just to receive information. Or we approach the Bible, or we search the Bible for things that we need to feed our flesh, or to justify some things that we want to do. You know what I'm talking about, right? We don't search the Bible to discover the mind of God, or as to what God wants to tell us or show us in that moment in time. We just want to search the Bible for things that would give us an advantage, um, when it comes to, I guess, an argument or when it comes to, say for example, you have a speaking engagement or you want to share the word with somebody and you want to just engage the Bible only during that time. So you go on Google to begin to look for different scriptures <laughs> to back it up. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that looking up scriptures, you know, for unspecific matters is a bad thing. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that if that is the only time you engage the Word of God, if that is the only thing that drives you and propels you to open your Bible, there is only so much you're going to receive. Pretty much how you approach the Bible is how the Bible is going to speak to you. How you approach the Bible ultimately determines what you're going to get from it. It's just like, you know, say my husband, for example, right? I like to use my husband as an example a lot because I learned from a lot from how we relate to each other. There are times when I'm trying to relate certain messages to him and based on my approach, if I approach him a certain way, I will get certain results. It's the same thing. Even in friendships, how you approach your friends, your homies, your teachers, whoever it is, any kind of relationship, the way you approach that relationship determines what you're going to get out of that relationship. Well, the Word of God is no exception because the Word of God is the voice in the heart of God. To not be in relationship with it, to not have reverence for it, to not um, what's the word I'm looking for? To not value it 
as it should be is is pretty much spiritual suicide it would limit what you're gonna get from it the last tip I'm gonna share with you guys is this do not be so critical of yourself while you begin this journey that you leave no room for grace to speak for you oh my goodness I cannot stress this one tip like enough I can't I really can't for years I was my own worst critic okay for those who have been following me on this um, channel for a while you know that I always I always share with you guys um, the daily audio Bible which I'm subscribed to it's a free podcast if you've never heard about daily audio Bible well you've heard about it from me now make sure you go and download that app right now I will leave the description box I will leave the link in my description box but pretty much it's an app that will take us on a journey through the Bible for a whole year where we would read together as a community and we would share insight and after that also we would pray together people will turn their prayer requests and so on and so forth it's an outstanding community to be a part of so make sure you get on it um and for the past couple of years I have not stayed the course yes I just confessed you guys know this this channel is about being transparent and being real I am not gonna you know fake it to you guys I have not stayed the course. I will start off strong and sometimes I will get back on, fall off the wagon, get back on. But it's been a while since I have actually listened to the DA before 365 days straight. And up until two, three days ago, I was beating myself up for it. You heard me. I was beating myself up for it so bad because I just had, I just always felt like I failed God by not finishing the Bible in a year. And I was in the shower a couple of days ago. Um, right after I just finished listening to the Daily Audio Bible, I think it was for the first of the year, and it was just such a refreshing moment. I literally was just getting so much downloaded into my spirit for that one episode that I was just so blown away, and I was so grateful to God for even still sharing so much with me in spite of my inadequacies, in spite of me failing Him, or at least so I thought. And in that moment while I was in the shower, the Holy Spirit began to tell me that you never failed me. I was never disappointed in you. You know, that was just you being hard on yourself and not letting my grace speak for you. But the moment you released yourself to receive my grace, then I was able to flow fr freely and speak to you freely. Whoa. So yes, that's the last tip I would leave you with. Give yourself grace. There will be days where you will miss it. There will be days where you will get weary. But understand that God is not tired of you. God is not over you. God is constantly sick for you to come back and engage him and he would receive you with open arms. And that's pretty much it, family. It's getting dark in Houston, as you can see, the, everything just changed, right? You see the difference in my face? Yes. I decided to film real late after I just got off work and it's getting really dark, so this natural light is not doing me good. <laughs> But yes, I hope this video blessed you. If it did, do not forget to like it, do not forget to share. And of course, again, do not forget to subscribe. And if you're not following me online, my social media handles just came up. Make sure you follow me as well. I would love, love, love to connect with you. If you have any more questions or any specific topics you would like us to tackle, please do not forget to um, let me know in the comment box. Or you can always send me an email as well in my direct email or reach out to me on social. Um, like I always tell you guys, I may not have all the answers. I may not know it all, but I am glad I know the one that does. And that's Christ Jesus and you can know him too. Thank you for digging with me today. Until next time, it's your girl Toyo C. You have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace.